Okay, okay, here we are. There's Bachi. Bachi Karkaria. Times of India. Big hand, ladies and gentlemen. And Indrid Haja. Indi. <laughs> they, they were doing P's to avoid Q's. It is. Mike is not there. Was it good, Indy? Good, satisfactory. Huh? Well, it had to be quick, obviously. The people waiting here, you can't. While you were queuing up, we were peeing. <laughs> Actually, this is. Can you hear? Yes? Oh, great. Because you couldn't hear in the last session. Can I speak this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Hello? Yeah. OK, are we ready to roll? No. OK, you can leave the room, whoever said no. No, I think it's great. This is in a room where people can't leave too easily. That's yeah, that's, that's right. Please lock the doors. Lock the yeah, doors. I think please close those two. Leave this one open. I, need, I might need to go to the loo again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our session is what? The language of laughter. <laughs> okay. So now language of laughter has no grammar. It has no syntax other than the tax you pay for the sin of not getting people to laugh at what you're saying. And it is translatable, not translatable. It has great serious study done. But I think it's terrible. Because I think when you start being serious about humor, or you start being, no, not being serious about humor, but when you start dissecting humor, it's a bit like dissecting a frog. You know, you can do it with the finesse of a surgeon, or you can do it with the clumsiness of a schoolboy, but in either case, the frog dies. But it was not schoolboy. <laughs> the schoolboy, sorry, schoolboys didn't mean to be uh, sexist about it. You can do it with the finesse of a schoolgirl. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So now laughter is really a free for all. A little bit like electoral wars or like an Arnab show. Now I want the laughs. <laughs> Okay, so um, really now, you know what I kind of thought, gentlemen, with your permission, we will kind of look at humor as a family with uh, three siblings. Again, not to be sexy, not to say bra sexist. Sorry, not. To. You can be both. It's fine. Yeah. So we can talk of the three siblings. We can. Someone said something. No. Okay. Uh, you can say anything, but don't say that you can't hear us. Mm. And you can laugh even if you haven't heard what we've said. You know, there'll be little cues where you look like canned laughter. Have they got the canned I'll, laughter? I'll go on? like this if you want. I'll go Have like they this. got the canned laughter on? No. Oh my God. Oh my God. Please, where's the canned laughter? Okay, so we're going to deal with um, satire and we're going to deal with irony and we're going to deal with comedy, who I think are the three siblings of humor. But does Smita irony uh, write comedy? Does Smita Irani really write guy, uh, sort of humor? Anyway, I don't know. Go yeah. ahead, please. We're not talking of Irani. We're talking of irony. Oh, OK, OK. Chalo. <laughs> now you know what you're in for. I'm sorry. I'm not responsible for the level of humor that's going to be, uh, you know, I've signed a disclaimer form with the organizers. So you will have to excuse these two young men on my side. <laughs> OK, come on now. Let, let, let's be serious. Hello. Absolutely. Let's be serious. <coughs> So come on, tell me. OK, what? I'll start. You know? <laughs> well, you know, it's really, um, let's just sort of look at it this way that, you know, everybody wants, the whole world is full of comforting illusion and cozy half-truth. And our job as, we hope, humor writers, is to take this veil off. So now, come on, come on, give me a hand, Indy. Okay, I, I, I'll be honest with you. When you said like uh, 
you about that frog and dissection and girls and stuff like that. I actually want to be taken seriously. Uh, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of pain I have felt every time I've uh, written anything which I think is funny, uh, and people say, "What, yeah, you're just writing funny stuff." I don't mind that you're only writing funny stuff, but what yar upsets me. <laughs> what yar I think that suggests that by being funny, I have to be frivolous. But I'm a serious, I'm a serious guy. And if they're saying what yar, then yeah. they're putting you in that bracket of, you know, the people who say what yar. They're not looking up to you, firstly. They're not, they're I not, think yeah. that's very important. Well, to me, they can't look up. Can you see how tall I am? Yeah. <laughs> so, but on a serious note, I think what happens is I want to have the cake and eat it too. I think when I write a piece of, uh, you know, whatever, satirical writing in a newspaper or uh, uh, somewhere else, I want to be taken without the veil in front uh, and sort of stripped down. But if anybody doesn't get my joke, I keep telling them, hey, don't take me seriously. So I essentially am trying to eat my cake and have it too. Or yeah, is it yeah. the other way around? The other way around. Shovan, how does it work for you? I, I think it's a public service. I think from from the time when I was very little, I had this urge uh, to sort of uh, make people laugh and feel better, and it was just totally selfless. Are the you an only child? I'm an only child. I'm, I'm an, an only child. Was, 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 no, no, I've got two sisters, but, but they're very young, much younger than me. Are they so taller? They, uh, <laughs> everybody's taller than me. <laughs> hello. Okay, now, uh, now, listen, hello. You know, you aren't supposed to make these... Uh, sexist what? jokes. No, it's not sexist. No, no, it's not sexist. It's not ageist. It's what? Linear challenge jokes. Yeah. yeah? Smallest. Huh? Tiniest. T yeah, ti tiny. Is Smallest. So you know, since we are talking of this yeah. sexist, ist, 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 hmm. yeah. I think uh, the biggest targets of humor are those who have isms attached to their name. True. You know, feminism, Marxism, masochism, masochism sadism. And if you will note, Humor, there's no such thing as humorism. So we are safe. Yeah. Yes, humorist is fine. So, you know, you can't make jokes about humorists. It's because we don't have an ism attached It's to more it. of a religious thing. I think it's more like, you it's know, more a it's more ma Mother Teresa or, you know, it's sort of very public spirited. In fact, it's, it's like doctors. Except that I think it's better than doctors because what happens is when a doctor makes a mistake, uh, it could mean death. Whereas when we make a mistake, you'll cringe, basically, right? Yeah. So cringing yeah. is much better than death. So cringe is better. We're better than, than doctors, therefore. Like, like uh, bad breath is better than no breath at all. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Indy. I can I go and have a brush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she or, was or, looking at you when she said or, that. Or, or die, whichever comes all, first. All she's saying is she wishes you, she's not wishing that you were dead, at yeah, the very yeah, least. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's getting there. Look in the bright side of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, we now stop. And Bachi, you've also, I mean, you, you write a lot of humor, apparently. Apparently. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and now, now sexist also. Okay. No, no. So, uh, so uh, I mean, unlike, let's say, a stand-up comedy guy who immediately faces his audience and the review comes immediately, like either people laugh or don't, which is what we are doing right now. When you're writing, how do you figure out whether you're not getting across or not? Or do but you I don't want to figure out. Oh. Shall I share this secret with this hall? Yes, please. That, you know, it's terrible to come and sit on a stage because then you can't run away from the fact that no huh. one's laughing. True. So please do laugh, I beg of you, or I'll never be able to write a funny line in my life. But when you're sitting back, you can always assume that people are writing funny. You know, and people are, people are laughing. And you see, unlike people who write about serious things, you know, politics and, and, and religion, you know, people who write humor don't get all these comments. And that's a terrible thing about new media. But Bachi, politics and religion yeah. are two of the funniest things there are. There yeah. are. Yeah. But, but try telling that to those guys. No, huh? they don't think it's funny. Yeah, right? exactly. No, but I think, I mean, the, you br bring in a very good point. I think the subjects are sometimes sort of stereotyped as serious mm -hmm. or like if you're writing about you know um, i don't know uh, no no not the, i don't think there are any serious subjects no but i, I think I, I we're think just like uh, like in fact in fact i'm sorry i'm going to steal your line from what you said and that is that the holier the cow the bigger the slaughterhouse you can send him Correct. or her to also yeah. the more shit that comes out of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so, I mean, I, I think one of the things that I like about both reading and writing 
funny things or sort of comic things is that, you know, you um, make those uh, sort of things which are compartmentalized and labeled as very serious mm -hmm. into quote unquote frivolous things and have a laugh at it when some people get shocked. And I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, I insist it should be done. Um, I, I think that's totally good because I think, I think one of the things about being funny is that, uh, or trying to be at least, is that there's a lot of stuff, particularly in our country, that, that you don't want to look at, you yeah. know, because it's so horrible yeah. uh, that uh, you, you wish it would go away, you know, like a Ram Gopal Verma <laughs> movie. You wish it didn't exist. <laughs> Uh, it would just go, you know, right. so it goes ultimately. Ultimately, it does go, that's the good side. But, mm -hmm. So you want, make, you want to make people look, and sometimes if you're funny, um, then uh, if you're funny about it, th then people look at it. Actually, it's really you know, true and then because, it uh, because so. you can get away with very, very many uh, subjects and very, very many comments, you know, than someone who was writing a poor faced piece yeah. about it. Yeah, that's and, true. I, and I think really, I think the trick really is, since we have now mixed up all these siblings committed incest, yeah, between yeah. humor, comedy, satire. I was trying to keep it on a ah. nice, polite, civilized tone, but since you guys have mixed them all up and put everyone into the same bed. We can try to be civilized yeah. again. I mean, it's not impossible. No, now the audience has got corrupted. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, yeah, so, um, so this whole business of satire hmm. and, you know, comedy, whichever way you look at it, I think, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of, uh, I always feel that if you, you know, bludgeon a subject, you know, with a sledgehammer, and you instead kill someone with a stiletto. Hmm. It's really so much, it's got so much more finesse. And it's like the line from Caesar about where Brutus says, uh, let us carve him as a dish fit for the gods, not hack him as a carcass fit for hounds. And it lasts longer. And it lasts longer. And more fun that It way. lasts longer, Absolutely. right. But I like also bludgeoning, to be very honest. <laughs> uh, okay. Because, uh, I mean, I think I sort of grew up watching a lot of violent cartoons, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not being funny, I, I, I really like that. It depends upon how you bludgeon it. I think there's an art. I think that not everything has, I mean, when you divide the siblings into satire, irony, um, uh, sort of editorial uh, pieces. Yeah, comedy. Comedy, <laughs> sorry, yeah, uh, comedy. I think there's not only, obviously, there's not only one way of doing satire. There's not one way of do, doing sort of uh, irony, but um, broadly, obviously. No, but bludgeoning is sheer comedy. It's like those much, I'm really sorry, since we are sitting, yeah. we can be rude about stand-up comics. Of okay. course. Go ahead. Yeah. It's mostly yeah, exactly. jealousy. But so stand-up comics are the ones who come with this bludgeon and, you know, for the lowest common denominator. Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, Porushuram, uh, yeah. Porushuram, the Bengali humorist, he once said that, uh, that sometimes a slim, a slim uh, cane doesn't do, what you need is a big bamboo, yeah. you know? And I think when you read the newspapers, you feel the need for bamboos, right? Ah, quite, bambooing quite frequently. is bamboo most important. Say, yeah. You need bamboo. Don't so, say bamboo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. So, so bl some bludgeoning is required. Correct. But, right. but I think that, I mean, I think we're, obviously we're focusing on uh, humor being directed at sort of social issues, public um, sort of uh, people, subjects, people. 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 Yeah. But I think there is another, kind of humor or comic writing which sort of uh, goes into individuals also. I'm talking about perhaps in books, uh, something that I, I find liberating while writing books as opposed to writing in newspapers because I can't suddenly write about, uh, you know, an individual uh, who is having a... Because basically every com comic situation is a very tragic, uh, tragic one. If you look at it, a guy sort of slips up on a banana peel and he falls on his head, we all start laughing. but. It's because it's, it's not happening to you, it's happening to the other guy. Yeah, it's a schadenfreude kind of thing. I want to ask you guys this question because I don't really, I mean, I don't write books. I mean, I only write a column. But you guys have written funny books or books with a lot of humor in it. Serious so, funny books. Seriously funny books or funnily no, serious. No, serious funny books. Serious funny or funnily serious? We'll, we'll, we'll okay, un all right. un Mine un had pages in it. So, uh, yours had pages? Yeah, it had pages. Oh my God, did it have bookworms? No, it had a lot of pages. Oh, did it have any readers? Yeah, a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, okay. I, 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 I've met all six of them. <laughs> They're very nice people, very nice people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is it, is it easier? I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed because like, you know, sustaining this, this kind of, funny line or humor line or <coughs> all, all the, you know, the nice satirical line through a whole book must be very daunting. Well, it, it, it's, it's like a squirrel collecting nuts. And I'm, I shouldn't be using the word nuts <laughs> on stage. But yeah, okay, nuts. But yeah, they collect nuts. Yes. They're nuts, actual nuts, you know. So, so collecting nuts all the time. So you keep squirreling them away in, in your cheeks, you know. Now you're getting and, worse. <laughs> and sort of you hold them in until it's time to spit them out on the page. So it's, it's like that. 
How long was your book? 450 pages, lot of nuts involved. Lots of nuts involved. It was fat. Fat. It was fat, yes. So, so yeah, you keep storing things, you know, you see something and you say, oh my God, that, that's what you, you know why Asaram Bapu, you know Asar, I promised I wouldn't talk about Asaram Bapu, but I have to, right, because you know, ahead. just to illustrate the point, the day I read about him in the newspapers, it was like violence and you know, the sky parted and there was beam of light that came down, you know, because what, what, a, what a story, yeah, I mean, yeah. just fabulous. Yeah, and there's so many people who's now, you can't touch because they've gone and either gone to jail or gone and got dead. It, it's, and a, it's, really a lo it's a loss it to society. A law. There should be a law. It's a loss it. to society. It's yeah, a loss absolutely. to the nation. People who are targets of humor should not be sent to jail absolutely. and they should not go die. Absolutely. What happens absolutely. to us? I couldn't agree with you more. And then they become all holy cows. No, Asaram Bapu has disappeared. No, he's gone into the legal system. So no, I mean, what I is the point of that? My, my former, my, my editor, Kushwan Singh, huh. who's really my mentor and everything. So you're blaming him? No, no, I'm yeah. not blaming him. I'm thanking him. I'm thanking him. Because, you know, he wrote his funniest and nastiest and most cutting pieces, which were obituaries. You know, when the guy couldn't hit back? Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's one, no, don't say ish like a big one. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, because, in, you know, we learned uh, in, in our way, way back in the Jurassic age when I was in journalism college, you know, in the book it said, uh, that about obituaries, you know, you could, it was nil nisi bonum, means concerning the dead, you could say nothing but good. But unfortunately, that has become into nil nisi bankum. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know, I, I, I have picked on dead people, but I have also picked on sort of, uh, what's the thing called? Uh, living people. Living people, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so, um, but one thing I've noticed that, uh, there are variations of responses I sometimes get in terms of whether it's a misunderstanding. I, if I write against, let's say, the Congress, suddenly the BJP gets upset, et cetera, et cetera. So I think at the bottom line is, the bottom line is that I don't write very clearly, which works to my advantage sometimes, I think. I see. That, that, that's I find a, that too. That's I find a that too. good ploy. Yeah, if, thanks, if you, if you, thanks, Indy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise I've always been told, oh, why do you pick on Mr. a certain Mr. M? No, no, no. It was metaphorical. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me, do you think there are certain communities who have more of a sense of humor? You know, like us, Parsis, Bongs, honorary Bongs. I, are I, you honorary Parsis? I, 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 think any, I think anybody who's in really deep shit has yeah. a major sense of humor. If you look at the yeah. Jews, yeah, they've yeah. been like funny and miserable yeah, for like yeah, thousands yeah. of years. Yeah. Right. You look at the Pakistanis, they're, they're much funnier. They're, they're way fabulous. ahead of us in humor. Look at the big yeah. Irad Big Day. But this Hamid. is serious. But we're getting this, there. We're this getting is there. serious. Yeah. This is serious because it's really the darkest times which kind of encourage yep. the greatest. You know, um, we have a uh, don't tell JLF that I push this at their at their festival. That's okay. But uh, we we at the Times of India in Mumbai run a Times Literary Carnival. Excellent mm. place. It is. Mm. Please do come. Much nicer, Shameless. not the mela, not the mela that it is. We've got kind of brochures outside. Pick one up as you leave. No, no, seriously. So we had Hanif Qureshi, who was our keynote speaker, and our theme was love, sex, and uh, sorry, love, romance, and violence. <laughs> but uh, I promise you, I promise you, I didn't mean to say this. <laughs> but he, <inst> but <laughs> he instead talked about the importance of humor as a weapon in dark times. And he gave an absolutely brilliant dissertation. So dark times really, really bring out, you know, Russian jokes, Polish jokes. Absolutely. Yeah. Also laughing, Pakistani laughing, what jokes. happens is laughing helps you feel less scared of people. Like yeah. one good technique is, uh, you know, if you're scared of an audience and you want to, you're speaking in public and you're scared of an audience, you have to imagine them naked. Yeah. You know, if you imagine them naked, then Let you feel much less, much less. Let us have a minute silence. What? Let I, us have I'm, a minute silence okay. and do just that. Okay, huh? yeah. <laughs> Hey, but See, we're, we're feeling less scared hey, now because Shabon, you look funny. You Shabon, look funny. hang on. Yeah, Amar Singh is in the audience. Oh, no. Oh, no. We don't want to see that. Okay. He's really there? No, I don't think okay. so. I'll stop now. <laughs> yeah, you please continue. Unfortunately, these but it lights work. are it's not true. very good because otherwise we could have picked out and seen <laughs> who we could have seen. Uh, no? Don't please, go please there. Say something. Say something. Don't go there. Just, All right. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, you know, okay. at my age, I take my kicks as I get them. Yeah, I'll think of something. No, but I mean, um, I think there's, uh, I mean, there's also the other kind, I mean, what you mentioned about dark times, I think when you mentioned Bengalis, Parsis or whatever, I think it's also a great, it's a weapon, but it's also a great defense mechanism, I think, uh, yeah. humor. I mean, when I speak for all Bengalis in the universe, which I have been given the power to do, <laughs> I mean that, look, we're, 
we've been screwed for a while and you know how we make Th good 30 years of stalin followed by 6 years of mohammed bin tughlaq that's roughly <laughs> Yeah. If, if your state goes through this, yeah. I'd like to see what shape you are in at the end no, of no, that. Yeah. Hello, I huh. must tell you, I just heard this joke. What? I, I just heard it at lunchtime. It said, um, oh, why has... Um, oh, God, I think I've forgotten. I'll That's okay. You say something, quickly. No, I'll think of it later. <laughs> no, I'll think of it later. But, uh, for instance, your problem is there's so few of Parsis, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so, at least let's go laughing to laugh extinction, right? Yeah, yeah, Better yeah. than going to some gas chamber. Mm. No. I never thought of that. But I think, I mean, one but, of the... But no, the sad thing, really, I, I mean, and this is serious. I'm really, really sorry. Are you going to give a caveat every time no, you're serious? because <laughs> I have to tell this audience now that they're not supposed to laugh at the end of it. Yeah, so these Parsis, I mean, the more they're going into extinction, huh. or be, they're going to extinction, because they're losing all the things which made them great. You know, they're losing their sense of adventure, they are being worse about their women than they ever were, and they're losing their sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So now you can't even laugh about them because, oh, poor thing, they're dwindling and they're dying. Let's oh. talk about that. Now, this, was, this, was a, this was the one point I think we dis We did a lot of rehearsal for about like three minutes or so. But yeah. The thing is that we, the one point, we are, are we funny or are, you think Indians are funny, right? See, I think they are funny, and I have a sort of theory about that. I think we've discussed that. I mean, a lot of people think Indians are not funny, only Polish people are funny. Or what do you mean they're not funny? I mean, do they have a funny bone? Oh. Oh, are they yeah, funny yeah. as a yeah, yeah, as object as a subject. or subject? Yeah, both actually. Please. But I'm just saying that Please, we can. People. I think we can laugh at ourselves. Yeah, is uh, my, my my perspective on this. I think that we have two levels of cracking jokes or writing about uh, us in a sort of comic manner. One is sort of a. Uh, on the public space. I think that is a problem that a lot of people have when they get agitated. You have four and a half Shiv Sainiks uh, standing outside a McDonald's because there's a guy who said that, uh, what was that? Asaram Bapu. And the Shiv is not Let's Asaram. not talk anymore about Asaram. So essentially, there are a few people who sort of don't get the joke or say that they don't get the joke. Yeah. But I think a lot of, there's another level where, you know, you exchange SMS jokes and you talk about Manmohan and uh, not Sonia so much, but uh, with Rahul, the sort of sexual yeah, yeah. tension that they have. And, yeah. uh, so I, I which of those three people? Is it all three of them? Or which, which two so, of them? So, so, <laughs> like. so, 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 okay. so I think, so I, I, I think I, I, at a more private level, people are constantly sort of cracking those comments. That's true. Things. Yeah, and, that's true. Um, so when people say that we don't have a sense of humor or a funny bone, I say, you know, there is this sort of, devout sense that in public space you can't behave like this in front of people like Bachi who are sort of iconic and you can't use the word. Uh, uh, no, but that's a very Bachi sir. We should be Bachi calling sir, her Bachi, Bachi sir. sir. So Again sexist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, so Sachin, Sachin sir, Bachi sir, it's so like... No, you're sorry, the same, sorry. Bachi ma'am is quite all right. No, but you know, Indy, what, I, I agree with you, but, but what I think is that uh, we do have... Icky, we do have a funny... It, don't be like that. There's a lack. There's a hey, lack. You can't Buffering. leave. The door is shut, yeah? Come on. What, what is this? <laughs> oh, she's taking a phone call. No, no. Hello, hi. No, no, she's organizing. Nice having you here, yeah? Hi, see you. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> so, so, no, so, so my point was that, you know, um, uh, we do have a funny bone, but I think that our culture sort of suppresses it. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the Australian cricket team, nobody's calling Ponting, Ponting, sir. Yeah. Uh, whereas Sachin yeah. is Sachin, sir. Yeah, and yeah. once you call a man Sachin, sir, you cannot make fun of his hair. Yeah. That's, that's a big problem. That's a, I faced that problem. I said, what? I'm going to mock Sachin, sir? I can't do that. Yeah. Or you look at Akshay, sir, for example. I saw this video where, like, Shunaksi Sinha was going like this, but and Akshay, sir, was also going somewhat like that. And yeah. then immediately after that, there was an interview where Shunaksi said, I really respect Akshay, sir. He's taught me yeah. everything. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what did he teach her? I mean, he yeah, doesn't have yeah. the equipment, right? right I mean, how right. can he be teaching yeah, her? Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. He doesn't have the tools. Theater. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, so I think that our worshipfulness is sort of a, a barrier to us. I would love to mock Akshay, sir. But Sunakshi is not letting me. But, <laughs> but at home, you talk, uh, you've uh, cracked jokes about Akshay. Akshay yeah, yeah, sir. but in public, that's oh, home. So you can do it. Let's not even so go is there. Is it easier what we do to home? then yeah. have a, you know, kind of uh, get away with much more when you're in the blog space or in social media I hope or so. SMS yeah, rather than print? I've been because missing Print the, yeah. has yeah, yeah. got this terrible. So, you know, I, ha I know, this is not fair. Why? Because then I have this terrible hidebound uh, forum of print. To get and an assistant to put it to on the net, no? Yeah, that they do, but it is ultimately print to net, hmm. not net to print, which never happens. Yeah, that's difficult. That's uh -huh. difficult. People don't, once it's free, they don't want to pay you for it.
But, but, yeah. but there's the other sort of and uh, side. And SMS jokes. Those SMS are the best. Jokes. But yeah. there's the other side of the spectrum, which is from print to the social media mm -hmm. to, I, I somehow think you can get away with a lot more in books. For some reason, in one, one's head, books are sort I'll of I'll tell you why, because they don't read books. Huh? So that's what I'm saying. People don't so read books. Nonetheless. See, section 67A of the, of the IT Act says that you can be put in jail for uh, up to three years uh, for annoying or inconveniencing somebody. Okay. So actually online you're in much greater danger than you are uh, with the printed but word. Maybe and if you're getting done for three years for that, that means it's, you get two years for uh, intentionally causing the death of a human being. But the books, so if you, if you annoy Karti Chidambaran, huh. uh, you get put in jail for three years. But if you get somebody killed, you get in, put in jail for two years. So it's a dangerous situation. But then, end. you know, like, like section, Very dangerous. Like but section 377. Yeah, yeah, but unnatural reading. Very unnatural reading, reading, yeah. reading yeah. you know, non-consensual, reversal of reversal of reversal you know you keep coming back to sex it's what really is wrong bothering with me. you Batsi? I mean, I'm but so sorry. it's true no it's true my it's apologies true. all young people everybody under 16 we'll stay in the that. room everybody over 16 leave the room no no nobody leave the room it's okay no, no, no. <laughs> mistake yeah please sorry. only parsis stay <laughs> no no we won't be able to... only non parsis yeah sorry. yeah what's wrong with you parsi we won't fill the front go honorary parsi sir Everybody. There are no honorary Parsis. There are no honorable Parsis. Why, why can't you make other people Parsis? If you're no, running out of a supply of Parsis, why can't you make other people oh Why God. can't they become Parsis? Shobhan, that's the why? most non-funny joke, why? most non-funny idea uh, in the community today. Who? Yeah. Can't, can't you like put a hat on them or something? I mean, no, no. no. We can't even cut bits and pieces off. Oh, oh. But Bachi... Again. So please continue. Sorry, but <laughs> see, I have to be, uh, bring up the seriousness of this. No, you have to. Too. Absolutely. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to you, do it. You, <laughs> you talked about lifting the veil or tearing it off. Now, now it's him, okay? Oh, no, please. He's li oh, God. tearing off veils now. I didn't okay. say petticoat, yeah. I said <laughs> veil. <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying, like, sometimes don't you think that there are certain subjects which are so in your face or so out there all the time that a lot of us just get numb about it and we don't really see it, see it. And making it funny, even if it's a sort of terrible mm -hmm. sort of subject, actually suddenly makes people suddenly realize a sort of... Uh, Absolutely. But I mean, your whole thing about the emergency, I mean, I would gather that some of your book is sort of yeah. sort of uh, tripping on the emergency or a, or a, or, or a mother-father figure kind of... Uh, it, it, it's tripping on things like uh, the, the, you know, organ donation. Yeah. And, you know, the thing in the book, you got this bank uh, yeah. where people go and they sort of uh, pay money and they get, uh, yeah. they deposit organs and they withdraw organs. Yeah. Just like, you know, Bank of Baroda or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that sounds very weird, but how is it different from Dr. Kumar's clinic in exactly. Gurgaon, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Only difference is that they got better carpets and yeah. air conditioning and nice posters. Right. So I figure that at some point, somebody in the organ trade will realize that better customer service is going to get them, you know, higher margins, yeah. you know, and maybe an ad campaign. So how far away from that? It's pretty close, if you but, ask but, me. So. No, but again, seriously, uh -huh. again, seriously, yeah. the whole point really of humor, of good humor, is that you make people laugh and you make them think. If you just make them laugh and leave it at that, I think you really haven't worked. Then you're at that very low level, which then you're you know, we, yeah, we don't deal with that. We don't, right? no? No, good. We don't. So if they don't laugh, we don't have to worry about that. Because that's just a low level no, thing. But hang on. No, oh, but every, hello, huh. please. Every time you laugh, please kind of say, okay, we are thinking. Huh, 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 yeah. huh. Like, go like this. But, yeah. but I would say, Bachi, that, uh, I mean, I'm not saying there's a sort of fundamental difference, but there is a sort of difference, obviously, when you're cracking a joke and when you're writing mm -hmm. something comic. I mean, yeah. how will you sort of, I mean, the responses are going to be different. The, the sort of act of it will be different. I mean, here we're talking in punchlines. I, I think writing is harder, yeah, because people yeah. aren't reacting when you're sort of cracking jokes and people are laughing. You say, wow, but man, they laugh. Then you crack another laughing. one. Huh? But, the, but that, that's the whole thing. It works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Two-edged yeah. weapon. Because, because when right. no one's but, laughing but, right now at this incredibly subtle joke. Yeah, which was, which was even I didn't get. Yeah. Please <laughs> make this little boy happy. Yeah. Yeah, At least if I had written that, yeah. I would have thought like... You wouldn't have known that it's I bombing. Would, that is absolutely, bombing. So, absolutely. Yeah. So That's I, the thing about writing. You don't know whether it's succeeding or bombing. So for really. me, writing comedy or writing funny lines or satire, it's actually a self-defense mechanism. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be known as an 
unfunny uncomic writers. But that's yeah, why yeah. the blogging part really helps here, yeah? because uh, what happens is if you, you know, you're giggling to yourself saying, what, this is like fantastic, and like, if only Woody Allen could see this, and then you put it out and nobody notices, right? So that's a big dose of perspective, and you get a good figure. Like, so I can tell you through the blog, so yeah. blogging, you have to get immediate well, like, not well, like, comments. Well, people that. say it's all friends, but even if they're all friends, if something is good, then more people respond, and if something is crappy, there's a deathly silence because it's going to hurt your feelings. And you and, confirm you, know. you have friends. Yeah. I, I, well, I, yeah, that's a, yeah. I think so, I'm not sure. But I get this deathly silence to all my colleagues. Let's discuss this off stage at some. I, okay. I really, why, why? There's so many people here. Let's no, not I go know. there. You, wanna, oh, you didn't hear that. Huh. No, but the, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, that it's it's like a it's a mechanism for testing things. So, like we were talking yeah. about, what makes India laugh? And I can tell you through scientific uh, data-driven research uh, that I've done on my blog uh, that the people who make India laugh are are are, are, are Rahul Gandhi, Robert Vadra, uh, Manmohan Singh, Arnab Goswami, and Asaram Babu. In that order. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. Very good. How about Mamata Di? Mamata Di, people are a little scared of laughing at, yeah, beyond the point, yeah, particularly yeah, no, the Bengali people. It's a niche. It's a niche subject. Ish? Niche, I didn't oh, say niche. Oh, I said not ish. niche. Oh, I see. Not peach, not yeah. ish, but niche. Okay, yeah. all right. But about the Bengalis, you know, you can always have lots to laugh about them, especially in the way they pronounce things, like the standard joke about, I was sitting there enjoying the cool bridge on the Howrah breeze. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the mistake? <laughs> okay, I remembered my joke since you said that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so because, you know, it's that, um, you know, because you said, you know, Rahul Gandhi has become Raga and Namo has, Namo, be yeah. now Narendra Modi has become Modi. Trinamool is very happy that there are all the Modi, uh, all the BJP posters all over the city because Momota Di becomes Modi. Also, she, no, oh, that's very good. Also, she's becoming fairer. If you look at the hoardings now, over the last six months, I've noticed, progressively, she's becoming fairer. She's, you know, you don't know, listen to the... Almost Aishwarya, I know. See, see. First, they were... Shut up. First, they were sexist. Huh. Then, they were ageist. Then, they were linearist. Huh. Now, they're getting into this fair and Complexionist. lovely We're complexionists. We're complexionists. This puts an entire complexion Let's put the veil back on. Let's put the veil I, back on. I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just observing that she's becoming fairer. Why yeah. did you notice that? I'm not that? making any value judgment. Why on. did you notice because that? Because she's not fair. Maybe she's mixing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Maybe she's mixing a lot with the Anglo-Indian Derek O'Brien. I'm mixing her up with Jia, uh, uh, Ratan Tata now. <laughs> okay. well, hang we on. should really stop this. mixing her with Ratan Tata? Yeah, they look similar, no? Ratan Tata and Mamta Banerjee. I hope they're uh, I, I'm not getting into this. Shingur, please go back to Shingur. Cho I'm going to Calcutta next week, so I'm not even Cho getting into Vena. this remotely. Yeah. Go back, go back. So are we going to like ask them any, uh, to ask us Is anything? Or we, we still have a little time to play our okay. Do yeah. you think they've learned anything? I think so. Huh? They've we learned to be sort of doing something how educational. How people need to ask questions? I'll just see whether I've got anything but educational. But they not put their hands. No, I don't know. No, please put their hands. Hey, we see, didn't talk about irony. About? What? About IUDs. We, iron, not IUDs, yeah. Oh. Come on. See, what is wrong with you people? Irony, 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 irony. We didn't talk How about How magnetic irony. is it? How magnetic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, I, whenever I'm asked to moderate, I keep telling people I'd like to do it like the Kumars at number 42, and they always refuse. Now you're doing it. It's very yeah, unfair. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right? I'm, in case you didn't know, I was the moderator. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. True. Irony. No, I don't know anything about irony, yeah? except what I've written here is that it's English like cucumber sandwiches and condescension. Uh -huh. so no, that's, I didn't get that either. I so didn't get, like, so I didn't, yeah. So I don't Better understand not irony. To, yeah. None of us get irony, actually, so it's kind of extinct. Uh, in but India. that's the whole point about it's irony. Uh -huh. All arm janta is not supposed to get it. No, no, I don't get it. I'm oh. pretty so you, I thought that's what, what do you think I'm trying no, in to fact, say? In fact, no, no, arm janta, you raised the... What are you trying to say? See, you raised the question, I think you forgot, but you raised the question about, you know... Maybe I answered it. I'm Arnab. No, she does. She, 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 you, you, <laughs> you raised the question about, you know, why there's so little uh, funny stuff in English writing in India. And I thought, uh, since you raised the question, I should answer it. Uh, which is, you know, do you remember? It's a so, loaded so, question. So the thing, you know, the thing is that uh, um, for 150, not 150, that's the other part. For like two, three hundred years, uh, 150,000 odd British people were ruling us. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, and they were ruling us, and there were a lot of poor people, and just these few British people. So, since then, it's that's about 150,000 of them, right? So it's been going on since then in the same method. But the problem is, they were white, and now the 150,000 odd people who are running the country, they're not white. So poor people might think, oh my God, they're just like us. 
So the whole thing about English is that it's like the weapon or the tool which keeps you above the masses. So you, could, you don't mess around with a tool that like that. Why, you don't make jokes and stuff. That is you know? why we in Kolkata uh, knew how to deal with it. That's because we're native white, Bengalis, no. Put the white people into the black hole and uh, make them just like us. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. But Mamata's fairer now. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so you, mess, you, mess, you mess around with English, you're dragging the ruling classes down into the black hole. So it can't, that's why you have so little of it. Must keep, must keep the ruling classes up there. We have to make the distinction between, you know, people like us and all these people who laugh at our stand-up comics. Absolutely, absolutely. But, that, uh, that's very, you keep that's knocking, not literature. But you keep knocking stand-up. Yeah. I, but in right, I like kind of situational then comedies. Then why are you sitting? I'm not a stand-up, but I, I, I sort of envy them because, as I said, like they get the laugh. I, I mean, you get like... And they've got to do a lot of work to get it, yeah? It's not easy. I mean, you, you, get, you get stuff thrown at you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until what, before you realize that all this joke is not working. Yeah, so, you know, no, then no, that's no, when you stop. No, but I mean, I'm just saying like there's a lot of situational humor which I like about stand-ups. And uh, I, I mean, I think I try and sort of put a lot of situational humor. By that, I mean, you know, somebody barfing on somebody or somebody disappearing under ma in a manhole. Yeah. Which happens actually, I mean, in India, no, you it, get news. No, I mean, writing funny stuff is also slightly a disease because yeah. what happens is you're writing something interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really good and your language is really rocking and like, it's like one of those epic scenes. Yeah. There's this, this little voice at the back of your head which is saying, make his pants yeah, fall down. Yeah, exactly. Make his pants exactly. fall down. And you do it, you know. So and that, you that's, do it, exactly. It's a psychological thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, you guys can do it. I'm not going to I think it. it's a disease, I think. <laughs> Now she's being all nice and nun nunnery type, yeah. No, no, I'm trying to keep my standards, excuse me. Okay, no problem. Take what standards? Banana skins, how about banana skins? No, we, no, I, I think bananas are for eating. Okay. Bananas are for eating. But what do you do with the skin afterwards? That's the only thing. That's not my business. Aren't there some charu walas to clear it up? <laughs> okay, so questions. Up to you. Now it's your turn to be on the mat. Okay, right there. Here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> The country wants, wants to know. Okay. Um, okay. What about funds? Bachi, you're like, you're great on that, okay? And uh, we haven't spoken about funding being funny or, uh, I mean, I mean, in India, I always feel that, you know, we, we know so many languages that we can make a, you know, like I can make a, I can, I can make a Tamil word, you know, have its English equivalent and make them like something that's really, you know, well, I, I, I think it's funny, I don't know. But uh, another question I want to ask along with funds is that, you know, um, is it related to puns or puns, something else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, related to puns. My son said to me, Amma, why are you guys, you know, all the time, you know, writing and, and, and you know, saying everything in puns? You know, what's so funny about puns? So it kind of brought this, uh, you know, fact home to me saying that as someone who's like 60 plus and who's, you know, the kind of language we use is like, you know, the Queen's English and stuff. So I don't know if, if the kids today, uh, this is such an old person's statement, okay? If the children today know enough uh, to kind of, you know, Make puns, really good puns, and do they find puns funny? No, uh, now see, I'm glad you raised this, and not also glad, not glad that you call me a pun pundit. But uh, the thing is that I hate to be uh, to be told that I write puns because you see, pun is really the lowest form of wit. <laughs> it's just a play on words, and it ends at the play on words. But actually, it should really be an association of ideas. And here I'm talking very seriously too that you must sort of, if you're playing on words, then you must also have the right context, okay? So you must bring the context into it. And I, I love quoting an, a former editor of mine who was telling another editor who was saying, well, you know, what's so great about Bachi's writing? You know, this guy has written the same kind of puns. And he said, well, Bachi's are not puns. They're an intelligent association of ideas. So oh. please, that's what I do. So does that answer your question? No. Yeah. I think she, uh, you mentioned, you uh, sort of mentioned about whether kids today can, uh, see I think the, the, maybe the yardstick that you're using for punnery, like go get thee to a punnery, why would you stop <laughs> thee, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's, it's slightly, I mean, it's a, it, like the language, it keeps changing, I think. So I mean, people might frown at whatever, Hinglish or Bengloid or whatever Klingon that we use. But I think that's part of the whole um, sort of clash of ideas or mix, mixing of ideas. So I don't think uh, the Queen's English, as uh, you mentioned, I mean, that's sort of necessarily the only um, sort of uh, clay toy to play with uh, these days. So that's my opinion. 
No, no, I think that puns are simply not justified and they should be suppressed as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> Under section what? It's section 144, which oh. is being applied in Delhi as yes, we speak. Correct, yeah. With want, water cannons. You won't get more the assembly of how many people? More than five people. Oh, five uh, you unless can they're muster. related to the prime five minister you can or, or, or yeah. <laughs> Five people, more than five. How many people then? Should we uh, get this counter? question over there? Many, many more than five. Hush. Now what? A oh, question. Hush. Oh. Uh, when Bodhos was asked, you know, what makes him funny, and uh, I think he said uh, that there are two ways to write a novel. One is go deep down into life and not get a damn, and the second way is write a musical comedy but without the music. So uh, there's two authors and not the columnists. It was just asked. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you your, your <laughs> 10 sure, bucks sure. outside. See, see, <laughs> see, one thing, uh, it's a bit of an aside, but one quick thing I want to say about Woodhouse, because we have a popular conception about him. He had a room in his house, right? And uh, whenever he was writing a novel, it would typically be about 180, 200 pages. Uh, he'd stick all the pages side by side on the walls of the room, you know? So each wall would have like 50 pages here and 40 there and 30 there. And the pages that weren't working for him, he used to stick them above the other pages. So when he was walking around the room, there'd be like 200 pages, there'd be six pages which stuck out. So he'd be, I love thinking of him uh, walking around the room and you know, look, because that's what he used to do, looking at each one of the pages and stopping, particularly at the ones which weren't yet working. You know? so, the, so that whole casual uh, funny thing that you see, a, a hell of a lot of work uh, uh, went into that. So I think he was an incredible uh, craftsman. Uh, so you know, to, to answer your question about you know, uh, the, the way to go about it, I don't think it's as simple as he said. You know, he was obviously, he was working in the, right, Andy was working in the area of comedy. And I think he illustrates that comedy is definitely not an easy thing to do. It takes genius, hard work, a hell of a lot of things, you know, to, to make it work at the level that, you know, he did. Uh, but that's not, I mean, you, I think you can be funny and, and serious at the same time. I, I, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't really agree with uh, the old man's statement. I, I, Although I, I admire him tremendously. Yeah, I, I, I haven't read a single P.G. Wells book. But I admire him tremendously because Shobhan does, and I respect thank him. You. No, no, that's, thank you. But thank you. honestly, I mean, I think, I mean, there are various kinds of comic writing and there are various kind of humor writing. I think comic writing can be much more trenchant from what I've heard about. I mean, there's not one kind of, as I was saying earlier. So I think there's a lot of absurdist kind of elements that some good, great sort of comic writing has. And I think there's a lot of comic elements that great literature has, which normally don't get tagged into comic uh, writing because, you know, the guy's a white dead guy. So we don't sort of associate him with comedy uh, necessarily. I, um, I would say, you know, reading, uh, uh, I was reading a Premchand short story, which yeah. is basi basically that, uh, what, what was it? Uh, uh, that shroud, the, the, the veil? Shroud. The Kapan. shroud? Not the no. shroud, not no. our veil. But not our veil, yeah. And, sorry? Kafan, 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 yeah. Kafan. Now, you know, for me, yeah. Kafan has incredibly, uh, I mean, it, it, it's disturbing because you start sort of finding parts funny which you're supposed to actually get completely scared of. There's this man whose wife has died and he's now hanging out with his friend to basically s pick up money to get his, uh, her, his wife's uh, fire burnt, but he's spending it on booze. And it's written in a way which is kind of deadpan. And it's comic writing, but it's very black. So, I mean, there are... A lot of the theater of the absurd is... Yeah, so, like I mean, Beckett is funny if you look at it without getting an English lit degree. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, very okay. serious if you... Till the critics of, come into the yeah. picture, you can find it funny. Or, or yeah. you take Toba Tek Singh. I mean, that's possibly the only rational way to deal with partition, the yeah. way he dealt with it. There was maybe no other way of, you know, uh, responding to that. And yet it is funny. A lot of it, the body of it, what the lunatics are saying, a lot of it is funny. So I think uh, sort of comic writing can be extremely violent in terms of waking us up or sort of making us think, oh my God, what's happening? Which I don't know whether PG Woodhouse, I'm not saying like there's- No, PG Woodhouse was another gentleman. Yeah, right. yeah, he was a craftsman. He was, a craftsman. He was like a stand-up yeah. comedian, yeah. but like he was doing it on paper. Sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like cucumber sandwiches. Over there? There, yeah, yeah, this oh, gentleman. Sorry, yeah. And we have, uh, we have uh, hands at the back. Oh. You know, we've been told oh, okay. that backhanded compliments are also good. Yeah, yeah, any, any, ki any uh, kind. Hi, I'm, I'm Darpan. Uh, my question to both Prachi and uh, Indraji. Uh, at one level, we see that there is a certain comic, like from Abul Tabul or Shukumar Rai, and also this uh, some co stand-up comic, as you mentioned. So I really admire George Carlin, who puts humor, and also there's a message, I think, exceptional. And then, 
And now if we look at it from an Indian context, we see suddenly on Twitter, uh, Alok Nath's trending, and there are these Alok Nath jokes. I don't understand where it emerged from. And then you have suddenly me with you. I mean, I would specifically make mention fake IPL player and what happened after that, and there's a great bomb. So the two very funny, com you know, comic blogs. Now if we take all of these, there are not really, you know, there are one or two pieces you write, but there's no comic books. Whenever I go to comic book section, you know, on any place, what I see is 1001 jokes, <coughs> and though the fat ones. So do you think that actually when you write, do you, see, do you perceive that you know there is an audience who does not read, or maybe the publisher from where you come that, you know, it doesn't work. You use humor as a salt and pepper, but don't make it the whole food. So you answer because you've written the book. Uh, uh, I mean, see, I don't think when I write a book, uh, I'm going to, at least I don't sort of say like, okay, I'm going to do a comedy or a comic thing. I mean, there will be comic elements. I like the genre reading as well as to try and sort of have comic elements in it. But I don't think it's like, I don't think comic writing is like a shelf which says romance or science fiction in that sense. In that sort this. of Yeah. Um, and, and I think what I like is not actually necessarily comic writing per se, but when I mix genres, uh, which is what I do when I'm writing novels. Uh, it's a different thing when I'm writing, um, okay. let's say, in the newspaper, because then I sort of, when I'm doing a... Because you, there you've got 600 words and there you've yeah. got 65. And if I, uh, and, uh, and I might lose my job, so there yeah. are issues there. Yeah. Whereas uh, I'm actually freer when I'm writing a, a, a book in that sense, even though there are 14 people who read them, out of which 10 are my father, it still is, I, I, I'm much more in a sort of liberated way of writing things like that. So you mentioned Abul Tabul. I'm glad you mentioned it because, uh, you know, uh, there, there are some crazy psychologically uh, absurd uh, comic writing, which I also like. Now, I don't know whether if, even if you go abroad or something, there'll be a shelf which says comic writing. Uh, so if you read Howard Jacobson or something, you'll find it in a, in, in a, in a shelf of books. So. I, I think it's a no. matter of uh, definition, yeah? And you're right, I mean, everybody's definition is individual and yeah, you can choose yeah, what yeah. you want to do. But uh, I'm not sure that there aren't anything called comic novels. It's just that they're very difficult to do. You know, like yeah. I mean, if you look at Catch-22, like yeah. yeah. or if you look at Hitchhiker's Guide, yeah. they say a lot of other things. They make points, uh, but they tell you that there, aren't, there are too many shoe shops on Oxford Street, <laughs> for example. But, uh, but the thing is that the fundamental intent is comic. Every page, they're trying to raise yeah. a laugh in some way or the other. You know, so I, I'd have to say, in my case, for example, I tried to write a comic novel. Right. You know? uh, I mean, there were, there were obviously whatever uh, complexes I had or whatever, you know, fears I had. I've been deathly scared of policemen my entire life. Yeah. Uh, so a way of therapy was to do a policeman and sort of, you know, get rid of him or whatever. You know? No, but, uh, but, 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 so there are, yeah, but, so there are Shabhan, comic novels. No, yeah, but Shabhan, you know, like your book, Competent Authority, yeah. it struck such a chord because, you know, you were kind of exaggerating a point and that's really the, 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 the whole point of satire or humor is that you kind of change the dimensions a bit, you know, stretch them one you just, way or the other. You just other. disconnect a you couple disconnect, of wires, you that's all. A few you take wires. reality and you disconnect yeah, a couple of exactly. wires and you see what happens. And, but you're making a, a, a point that, that touches a chord in lots of people. Anyone who's had to pay, you know, to get their birth certificate, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, will find a chord in this. But again, to answer a question is that really sometimes I think humor also lies in the eye of the beholder of or the mind of the beholder. Because I may find something very funny absolutely. and I say, and somebody else may say, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some like I hate, I don't find anything that these guys write funny. I, I find, know why you've been I find it tall. Same here, absolutely. It's, it's mutual. I find it strikingly tall. <laughs> See? <laughs> Someone in the back? Back, 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 yeah, there. I think the people who raise their hands have gone away. They don't you like know, our answers. The Americans don't know how to laugh. They don't know what is laughing. Who? They do it, so they have only one day in a year, laughter day. Who is no. this? Americans. Who? They Americans. Americans. Ameri Please what? say that again. Sir, one day, in a, one, year, one day in the year, there should be they a laughter day. Have a laughter day. Yeah, yeah. So only laughter day two times maybe. You have to give money to funny people on that day. Whoever you find out is funny, just take out your wallet, give money to that person. Yes. Once a year, that's all. Once a year, that's all. Once a year. Thank you, sir. Thank Please you. Please check, there, check, cash. All welcome. The other way to, for my boss called me, meeting, I could not laugh today. Next year, I will laugh. Yeah, okay, no problem. 
it will be much louder because you waited one year for it, right? Yes, you know, Bengali that you know, you know it, it reminds me of that guy who did the sex survey, you know, and he had this, uh, and he was a psychologist sitting on stage just like Bachi. Also, he was talking about sex continuously and, uh, and he says, okay, I want to conduct a little experiment. And he says, how many of you have sex uh, once a week? And some people raise their hand and say, how many of you have it, uh, you know, twice a week? And some people raise their hand and say, how many of you have it once a month? And a few people raise their hand and finally very hesitantly he says, uh, how many people you have sex once a year? And one guy just leaps up and says, me, 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 me. <laughs> so the guy says, okay, fine, that's good. But why are you so excited about it? He says, it's today, it's today, it's today. Oh my God, there's a gentleman there, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Amar and you guys have been extremely charming. Uh, <laughs> Okay, my question is, uh, you, spoke, <laughs> you spoke about, uh, hi, this is, oh, okay. hi, I'll just stand up. Yeah. Okay, so my question is about, uh, because I, I'm lucky to have some, some, uh, a lot of funny friends who laugh a lot, and I myself laugh a lot, but there's some people who, uh, who are very serious around me, and uh, like in the beginning you spoke about people who are dissecting humor all the time, uh, and I, I think about, uh, I think about lightening them up, you know, so that they, they laugh a lot, and they, but they're very serious. So, and, and you're speaking about, like, do Indians have a funny bone or not? Uh, so don't think, don't, so uh, in the context of, you know, uh, making people laugh or don't really laugh much, uh, don't take it as a sex joke, but ways are funny bone. <laughs> so basically how to, how to, how to, how do you, how do you think light, uh, you can lighten up the people who don't really, I mean, how do you, how do you bring more people? Uh, we have more? to be osteopaths or what? I think we cannabis is one way. Can cannabis. Funny bones into people. Um, I think that's a quick and effective you know, it's way. It's bad enough, it's bad enough dealing. See, we can deal with people who have no backbones. Those people we can deal with. But people who have no funny bones, I'm sorry, they're doomed. <laughs> they're the gentlemen there at the back, yes. Hi. A uh, question to all three of you. Uh, what is your own personal no go area? Uh, the holy cow in your humor writing? My inner set today. Sheesh, <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>, man. <laughs> but I don't know. You guys, uh, <laughs> Listen, I'm not connected. I use the Latin this, word. This is a message to the organizer. I'm not connected to him in any way. We're not a package deal or anything like that. Please. I, I just want to. Any organizer, please. Are we please? talking yeah. about the Section 377 again? Yeah, uh, absolutely. There are uh, cops outside, man. I honestly think there's nothing that is sort of off limits in that sense okay. and uh, sometimes when I do get in trouble then I realize that there are some other people who have things which are off limits not only for me and but sometimes they can people. come and burn your house down so you have to learn to live with that yeah but I mean those are considerations I have to do about you know <laughs> because somebody else has got pissed off so if you look at my sort of unpublished uh, things in the shelf you'll be a sick I can't say the next word because there's no Latin no, no, for no, please, Oedipal no, 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 character no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, religion mostly, religion yeah. because, uh, you know, there but are... not uh, all kinds. Like, you know, I, I went to uh, uh, David Davidar and I pitched the idea for a sequel to the Ramayan and uh, he said, why don't you kill me right now because it's much faster. <laughs> and he said, like, guys will come and, you know, burn down your house, then they'll burn down my house and then the neighbor's houses will catch fire. You know, and the whole thing will become a mess. I, I really you know? want so, to make no, a serious religion. point Asha. here. Yeah. Is that, you know, it, at one point it started with, oh, please, no jokes about X. Mm. Then it became no jokes about why. And you know, like for instance, every time at Christmas, I kind of do a spoof on carols and, or something like that. And then one year when everyone was getting fundamental and mental about it, they said, how can you do this about our Christmas carols? So I said, now this is really going too far. And so we said, you know, because if you're going to look over your shoulder for everything, then really you might as well become into uh, I don't know what. Editorial writer. Editorial writer, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a gentleman no, no, no. there who's raising his hand, yeah? What yeah. Y what yar? Oh, what yar? Oh, sorry, yes, okay. This is not a, this is not a question. It's a, it's a, it's a comment okay. on which you may choose to comment. I've been Stand up, please. No, thank you, no, thank you. <laughs> I've, <laughs> part, no. I've, been, I've been in the JLF now for four, for four days. It's been really exciting, dynamic, intelligent, invigorating. Everything you could hope for until about an hour ago. 
What, was it? I can't speak for Indy, but, but sir, my, my objective has always been to lower standards wherever I could find them. <laughs> and and, and the, fact, the fact that you said this, it, it's just such a great, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so mean. I'll fix you outside. <laughs> it was a bad lunch, huh? <laughs> okay, some more? I think uh, just one last one. Oh, He's last. been asking for a long time. I mean, he hasn't been asking. This is last will and testament. What's your view on sarcasm? Because is it supposed to be funny? Many people find it offensive too. <laughs> so what's your take on it? I think sarcasm is very funny. That's their problem. <laughs> Only the people I think, who... I think when you do it to other people, it's very funny. When they do it to you, it's not at all funny. <laughs> that's, that's the basic, basic. Then they say, sir, there's a big shazam <laughs> between you and me. No, of course you don't ponder anything. That's very really bad. Yeah, that was, That's really that was, that was bad. terrible. I'm sorry. On the spot, pretty I'm good, sorry. actually. I think we're out Sarcasm. of time. Um, so thank you. Yes, thank oh, yeah, you thank very you. much. Thank you. I'm the moderator. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> thank you very much. Should I say you've been a wonderful audience? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> we wish to thank you.